I like your hat. Is, are I we need, now the screaming butterflies? I needed a little something. I mean, this apartment's horrible for backdrops. So I was like, eh, this is my partial Halloween costume because I'm going to be a butterfly for Halloween. I'm very excited. I love that. I think that's great. So who are we now that you are warmed up? The screaming divas. And who did we interview today? Exciting. Oh, this was super exciting. I, you know, we don't know each other personally, but we've sent messages back and forth through Instagram. And I just um, really fell in love with her heart. And we interviewed Eileen Perez, soprano extraordinaire, recently engaged to Solomon Howard, so recently role debuted Tosca in San Francisco. Oh my God, we had to talk about that. Had yep. to talk about that because what does that mean for her future I mean we were excited to talk about repertoire and and how that felt for her despite you know Tosca Club she's now a, an official member of the Tosca yeah Club. so I guess she could be an honorary screaming diva I honestly we need to send her the t-shirt but she loves sparkle so we have to have it glitterized oh oh yeah that's a good idea but this is honestly all of all of you young singers out there we say this all the time but very inspirational to hear from another singer and what she's gone through during the pandemic and how she's you know how she's managed her career and where she is now i mean amazing just an amazing career and just you know skyrocketing the sky is the limit with her career and such a honest and sincere human being so honestly check this one out people it was a good one i need press I mean, Perez people, I mean. And I can't take Carrie seriously with butterflies on her head. Just saying. <laughs> Check out our clip, people. Wait, 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 wait. Here's, here's another part of my costume. Oh, wait. But that's beautiful. Oh, you look like the Queen of Sheba. There she is. I'm a queen. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. All right, here's the clip, people. Check it out. Love you all. Stay safe. Bye. If heaven exists, what do you want to hear God say when you walk through the pearly gates? Welcome home. Here's your big shoe closet. Uh -oh. <laughs> full of shoes. Yes, full of shoes. We have to make sure, right? That fly, yeah. <laughs> so yeah. Sparkly everything. Or maybe sparkly it'll be like everything. all sparkles. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm home. <laughs> Welcome to heaven. Everything is sparkly. There we go. This is Carlos Alvarez all over again. <laughs> I know. Hello. Hi. Oh, there we go. Like Yay. Good. Hi. Are jammies on? <laughs> are those pajamas? Well, no, these are modified jamas because I was like, I'm not going to wear sweats with the divas, the screaming divas now. And I then have... I just had a navy robe. Oh my God, you have reindeer pajamas. <laughs> I have my Canadian. And wait, oh, um, we oh, need oh, to show the whole world. Yes, oh, I need to show the whole world what's on my oh. bum. She's going to do it. Oh, this is gorgeous. She's going to do it. Here you go. Oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you, Sandra Rabinowski, for the photo of your ass. <laughs> That's it. That's a wrap, right? Uh -huh. Three world famous sopranos. <laughs> One with we, a button that says happy camper. I mean, I thought the sparkly divas on this were, were going to go cash, so I put butterflies on my head. So this is part of my Halloween costume. Nice right. Is that a hint, Carrie? Is that a hint? <laughs> that, oh, un bel dividrimo. <laughs> <laughs> How are you? Where are you? Yeah. I'm in Firenze. I'm doing really well. Um, I'm totally jet lagged out of my mind. And uh, I do have really, really nice pajamas, especially very cute. I just didn't pack not one of them, not one of them. Solomon's like, I get you all these great pajamas and you leave them behind. I'm like, yep, I did. Yep. Nailed you know it. what? <laughs> this is what happens these days. We go, we forget how to pack. I did. Oh, I never I, learned. You I, never learned? No, please. No. I, oh gosh. You just either it's buy like, first or pay for all the baggage. <laughs> yeah. All of it. It's all of it. I think I'm an evergreen, you know, 
So like I have deep roots. So I, every time I move, even though it's super exciting and wonderful, it could even mean going home, right? After a long mm -hmm. time, I just feel completely distressed, a little distressed because I want to end things really well and I want to start things well. And I worry so much that I just, I lose it. <laughs> and I leave things behind that I need, like oh, pajamas. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, well, Dolores yeah. Logic actually used to have somebody pack and unpack for her. And yeah, I said, that's smart. That that's person smart. I need. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Yeah. No, no. Carrie's like, no. No, I'm too much of a control freak. I can't handle that. <laughs> you know what? Is it, Carrie, do you feel like it's almost near the same? Like if someone's like, oh, I can help you move. And they mm -hmm. volunteer. You're just like, eh, thank you. Um, <laughs> but, you, uh... you won't be friends with me when it's over. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, okay. We, we, we have a, a bit of a time issue today because Carrie okay. has a, a, a luncheon to go to. Yeah, so, okay. Eight. A lunch date Ooh. with singers. How fun is that? That we can actually do that now with That's people amazing. live. Isn't this is it? new. This is all new territory, isn't it? Yeah, for it's all of you. You're in Seattle and you're rapping Bohem, right? Yeah, I've got three more shows. We just opened. Yes. Yesterday. Oh, oh, yeah. a matinee for an opening, huh? Yeah. Aren't oh. they the best? Oh. Right, right. You know, yeah. Chicago. I, I, yeah. I got on, I was talking with Kong, my tenor. I got, I did a, I love a Peloton. Everybody knows I love Peloton. So I did my 30 minute walk run thing, you know, hoofing it on there, sweating, waking my body up. Yeah. I do my squats. I do all my stuff to wake up. I skip to the theater and I still just want to lay down. <laughs> and Kong, how many did we do in Chicago? I mean, well, how many, how many matinees did you do of the ladies here? You want to hear, we had dress week with then like a day off after like a week of going on and stop. And then we opened a matinee. And so the first two shows were both matinees. So the, the third show, it was three, it was five total. So the third was the first evening one and it was like 7.30. And then the next two evening ones were at seven. So we were all just like, whoa. Yeah, and three you know, of our six were matinees. Uh, three of six. Yeah. I was and we not, had a I was, Wednesday matinee, people. Yeah. Who yeah does that yeah and people go and it sells out and i saw so many people travel in for the shows and they're so excited to travel again right yeah i know so, well yeah, let's, but, let's backtrack yeah. i know you were doing you were doing ladies there there in chicago but let's backtrack to something very special because yeah. now you are a part of this group you have sung tosca tosca, tosca club tosca club <laughs> how was it and how did that come to be like this is new this is like big girl rep like you you know like grown up stuff. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh my gosh. Well, thank you so much for in, actually Carrie reached out and wrote me the sweetest like most soulful rite of passage message that I've never received in my life before. So mm -hmm. that already made me feel like wow. It's the thing I think we all feel as we do all of the soprano rep, right? Like you know Renata Scalza was doing measuring out this cadenza like you know everyone had a, you just the wood shedding that has to go into a role that's like been sung by all the greats it's just part of the territory and it takes courage and it's frightening sometimes and sometimes some parts are comfortable so I actually listen to your um I've been following your show for a long time I love it and Yay. um but it was fun to hear you both talk about Tosca and I thought gosh I'm gonna like glean this and like should I ask, like, should I, like, you know, sometimes you, I don't know. I, I just thought like, oh, I should just, what if I just call and ask? Like, what'd you do yes. here? What'd you do here? And then I was Why like, not? no, That's I know. Our I job. About that. Oh, Pay it forward, right? It. We, we, we yeah. teach people That's I think it's all of our singers jobs is to, to take all that information that we know and, and give it to the next generation. Totally. So, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Sandra did it. That would have been, that would have been really helpful. Let me tell you. How However, was it? It, it was go? really, it was really exciting. It was very exciting. It's one thing, okay, layers to it. Here are the cool layers. It became so much more than just Tosca because we're talking like first opera company back from the pandemic, uh, rehearsals and masks. And I'm talking like the thicker ones that were created um, to keep everybody protected at San Francisco Opera. Oh, yeah, that one that which, like a feed, feed bag. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I've been hearing it bad was, things about those, sorry. 
You know what? They're they're not ideal, but I'll tell you that production team, heaven. Everyone, Matthew Shelby's leadership and everything has been total, total heaven. So that's what I mean about the layers. And then also very poignant, um, Solomon and I, it was our first opera together, you know, to be oh. in together as a couple, which was really amazing and a big gift and super luxurious of the thing. And San Francisco um is another home away from home because I was in Marilena in 2005 so okay for all of those reasons plus my short son Kim it was her first opera you know in her music music directorship yep. so and she's walked through the score before with many other people so I felt like it couldn't have been the more uh you know also Michael Fabiano and Alfred Walker and Right. The whole team, Dale Travis in the room, you know, Dale, like quintessential professional. It's his birthday today. Happy birthday, Dale. Um, <laughs> he's, it just, it's that moment. Okay. <laughs> I'm not good at nutshell things. <laughs> and I guess I haven't really unpacked it myself, but it's that exactly what you hope for. I think for mm -hmm. debuting a new role. When you talk about, when you hear people talk about the ideal way, which I think it takes many years to ever get to be lucky enough for that ideal way of debuting, mm -hmm. you know, where you have the production is going to be supportive, the production team, the music director, and where it all, all of lines that. up, everything lines yeah. up. Yeah. I'll tell you, having done this now for quite a few years, that on one hand, you can count those moments where you just go, wow, the universe just yeah. said, Again, yeah perfect perfect happiness but yeah. yay so how did I got to see you? I feel like when I when we saw the live stream from Madrid that's how I felt it lined up for you actually the Tosca I mean I loved cool. it it was <laughs> pretty cool. cool it was one of that oh one of those oh my god yeah. she's gonna touch him she's gonna touch him what's gonna happen I don't know I don't know it's gonna be so it, I was yeah I'm I such know. an opera geek and I love I love watching artists you know, I just, I really do. So I had a lot of fun watching that. And um, so, and then Carrie, I've been dying to ask you like about more about, you know, how everything with Mimi is going and like, you just did a beautiful post. And I thought, oh, of course you're voicing Mimi. What a glorious, glorious pairing. Oh, yeah. I, I love her. She was the first Puccini soprano role I wanted because I knew I wanted to sing the bigger stuff, but I didn't want to start with anything but her. So I kind of put that out in the universe and then I ended up with her and ended up with 17 performances of it for the first time. And it just, um, it, I just, it taught me so much about Puccini and then about how he wrote it and within all those little nuances that are throughout it, it's just something special. And then as you travel through, as we all know, through Puccini, it's really hard to find those conductors that actually know how to do it, that know how to make yeah. those, to make it so special where it's almost like things are shimmering in the air because you've been able to do these passages going in and out, it's just glorious. So they have to breathe with you, as we've said before. Totally. So conductors have to breathe with you in Puccini. So to come back yeah. after yeah. this, all this time into this role, especially with such short notice, especially with I hadn't been singing at all. And I would have had to say no to this job mm -hmm. if it hadn't been for, you know, my friend, Michael um, saying, hey, come sing a concert. And um, you know what I mean? So for me, it, it all lined up in a way. And But even when I got here, the insanity of singing in a mask because I hadn't done it. And anytime I went, we need to talk about this because anytime I yeah. went from a G, you know, a high G. Yes. Um, yeah the okay. immense sound that comes back to you is so horrifying that you think it's wrong and then everything gets closed and i'm watching this one by one with all my colleagues and i'm thinking we are all suffering the same th then i get on the phone i start calling hey 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 how have you managed this how have you gotten through this um i would we should tell our viewers hold on a second that yeah. we have to all of us still have to rehearse with masks on in the rehearsal room and for for Carrie at least even with orchestra she had to sing with masks on so imagine what we do there you go big mouth trying mm -hmm. to sing with a mask that's here it's yeah. near impossible 
I, there are moments where I finally just said, okay, forget it. Once I hit an F or a G, I'm, I pull and I pull so that I feel like I can have the space and the sound that I need to not hear here. But um, yeah. in a nutshell, it was, it's been a very overwhelming, emotional, even this morning, I'm emotional thinking about it just because yeah. um, it, to hear the audience again, then you're still dealing with all the drama that we all dealt with um, before COVID, you know, with stupid shit <laughs> happening, monitors so loud, you can't even hear the audience. You know what I mean? You're dealing oh. with, with, oh my God, you're dealing with yeah. stupid shit. And you're just like, yeah. I needed in my mind, I think I had created this perfect, glorious experience that was going to happen yesterday afternoon. Of course, that's not what happens. <laughs> Here, I mean, Eileen, I saw Eileen and Solomon in Paris because Solomon was in the Aida with me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it's it's been it's been a difficult ride for a lot of people. And I think you with, for instance, with your monitor issue yesterday, I just think a lot of it is exacerbated because yes. everybody's it, like something small now becomes massive yeah. because I think yeah. people yeah. are so raw and, uh, you know, like this is Seattle Opera's first thing back. People are yeah. just getting back. Am I right, Eileen? Like people are getting I back on the horse. Ladies, you just hit on three major things that are tough. People coming back out of practice, that already puts a limiting, I think in the best of circumstances, we all know once we get to stage, that stage time is already scheduled, yeah. controlled by the production, has nothing to do with what you need to do with your arias or whatever you're doing with colleagues. And like, you're trying to figure out acoustic has nothing to do with singing. Right. It really doesn't. And yet you have to, because that's your, that's our sport. That's our craft. And that's what we have to do. So it's like, I've gone home many times, totally frustrated. And then I have to say like, of course, everyone's trying to do their best. And I need to calm down and like, understand that I need to say the same thing again. And maybe I need to say it to more mm -hmm. people. Let's try that. And let's hope for the best. And then I have to say, it may be that this circumstance is not going to get better. And right. I'm just going to have to rely on some other things. So maybe I'll just cut away all the staging. Mm -hmm. I'll tell my colleague ahead of time and say, Hey, I need to, I, I can't hear, or I can't do this or whatever, you know, and just do your best, do your best. And the audience has zero clue anyway. Right. You know? exactly. and it's, it's so, I think that that's hard too, because unfortunately we can't put our instrument down No. and like, yeah. and like step away that far to understand, like, don't carry that, don't carry it, you know, mm. and uh, we're all so responsible and also trying to do our very best and give our very best all the time. And sometimes it doesn't look pretty and it's frustrating. And, and also, and okay. I mean, <laughs> think about it, but in Chicago, we had a week of stage time, a new production of Macbeth, new production, a week of stage time, cut away. And this is the new norm, right? They are cutting and cutting and cutting our, our production time down. So not mm -hmm. only do we have to have less time to get it done, but we have less time with a mask and with people who are just coming back to work who are still like a little, ooh, what am I doing? How, how does, how do I move scenery again? You know, like, how do I, yes. right? So it's, we, yeah. you're right, Eileen, I think we have to cut people a lot of slack right now because, yeah. And I will say there's perspective because yeah. I called home to my hubs and I was, you know, like, blah, 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 about a His response was brilliant about piano draft for herself <laughs> and there was like silence at the end of the at the end of my rant and he's like bebe you could be home deciding whether we're going to go up the street to wing night tonight so what do you want do you want to sing or you want to come home like what yeah. like pick your battles bebe and go with <laughs> and it scene. And, and, <laughs> and scene and scene and i was like i told him i go Listen, I love and hate you all at the same time right now. <laughs> and then Carrie texts me and I'm like, well, he was very nice. <laughs> I think I would have been like, um, Carrie, what the fuck? Get over yourself, Wait, girl. Get over yourself. You so, wanted this. Now oh, man. get in there. Do it. But you, you know what? You are absolutely right. And you've been, I think, very fortunate and lucky mm. to have sung through the pandemic a lot in Europe. Like you didn't, when I saw you in Paris, I said, where's home? And you said, my suitcase. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so, I think it's it's been so um, fortunate to work, and then also just just to have the experiences of all the way different theaters were handling everything. Um, <laughs> I wanted, I was actually going to talk. I want, I really wanted to grab a coffee with you, Sandra, when I saw you in Paris. But I know how tiring all of this is. You know, it's like I can't imagine the schedules, the the things we all have on our minds that are worrying us to death about payments and this and that and travel and you can't see our loved ones normally and it's been really crazy um so even in the most fortunate of circumstances to be able to work there was still so much unclear and there was a stress you know and people you could hear I mean I, I felt like I was singing but there was such a sadness <laughs> it was like Mur. because yeah. again like you it was about how many rehearsals you're going to sing with a visor you're going to put up the visor you're going to do this you can't touch people if you if you look at a you know if you touch a prop that prop can no longer be touched by anybody right. else so how do you do COVID the letters tests. Thing, you know yeah uh blood tests or pcrs yeah. and one country accepts and another country that so it's been weird um it has been but you know what look where we are now you know yeah what? yeah i, I was yeah. so i was so surprised being here and the rules here for COVID versus the rules with my friends at Sanford right now, the rules were short, um, Sandra was in Chicago. And I wanted to know why. Is it different because of our union? Is it, why is the union saying 5,000 different things everywhere? And what I have oh. learned is that it's not just that. Yes, it's the unions. It's all the unions of that particular opera house, but it also has to do with the mayor, the city, the governor, yeah. the state, yeah. all of the exactly, rules are yeah. different everywhere. And so everyone has to comply with all of that. And if there's mm -hmm. non-compliance or somebody complains or something happens where maybe somebody saw me lift my mask and they got pissed and they called so-and-so, does that make sense? That didn't happen, but that could, does that make sense? So it, it does. Yeah. And so I feel so bad for the administrators trying to navigate this new world on top of trying to open up the opera house again and getting butts in the mm -hmm. seats because that's the most important thing so yeah. um yeah. it's i mean i'm so glad we're oh, we're opening but this is a whole new world people i mean this is new territory and and let's let's talk uh, sorry eileen sorry i'll let you oh no that's why i think that was uh, such a miracle to be in san francisco because especially so like act two tosca right um, in the mask that we were using, which we had to use, right? Um, I, I can exactly, the same thing. I could miss a G on a good day without a mask on, okay? <laughs> it can be in the wrong spot and I can miss it all day long. Right. <laughs> but in the mask, missing that, you're like, wait, my F sharps are good for a while. And then you, you take it off after, you know, an hour of singing. You think, why is it hard to sing an A or a B flat? And you think, yeah. how am I going to get through the second act? What the I hell? Know. So that mm -hmm. completely freaked me out. Yes. And we had a, we had a music, you know, I, I expressed it to the production team and I said, look, here's what I need. I, I can't tell you enough, like, please. Like, and then they, they did protocols and created zones. Yes. So like a okay. certain crew of people who were not inducted into the, like the, you know, weren't getting testing as regularly as we were, we were called zone A and then they had zone A rehearsals and they were still limited times, but the more we were expressive about our needs and understanding, like, of course, yes, I was speaking up for myself, but I know the guys, everybody, we were all feeling it. But and it's then your role you take a mask off. And a massive yeah. role debut. I mean, yes. that is like and, a yeah, huge. Yeah. <laughs> No, yeah, I, but I don't, but I thought, but Sandra, I thought like, I know Sandra wouldn't do this. And then when I saw you having to do it, I was like, Shit, she can't be my excuse anymore. Okay, well, like, imagine trying to sing a high C in Aida with a mask on soft. No, no. Or a high D flat with a mask on. No. So, so we have the Aida high C and the high D flat at the end of Macbeth. I was just like, peace out, people. Yeah. I think yeah, I, I, at one point I was just like calling my my husband and going, yeah, I think I think I can't do this. I yeah, I'm going to have to I'm going to have to quit. I'm going to have to quit. Did it scare you? Like did you did it take a moment for you to understand that it wasn't you personally your instrument but it was the effect of having to sing through and like not realizing the air pressure and all that kind of technical uh, stuff you were of doing? Of course. Of course, and you know Carrie did the exact right thing. Carrie, well first off, I was fortunate enough. I so, 
you know, I'm like a OCD type A personality. So I was like, right. I need to find a mask that I can sing in because I know my voice and I need this kind of height, not that that kind of space. I my space is this way because of my face shape, right? So I know that I need love. So I'm like on the internet and I found this <laughs> National Geographic thing that was called Aragami. And it, it has like these little accordion things here on the side so I could get yes. the height that I needed. But still oh, singing yeah. with something there because we as singers, we have to figure out, you okay? Me? No, I was like, it's just freaking brutal singing that damn thing. So I ordered the Aragami too. And I, I had to get in the practice room every day. And there was one room where I could go in and sing without the mask, kind of like your zone A. Yep. And I would sing without the mask. I'd sing the phrase, mm -hmm. you know, sing it, put the mask on, sing it. Oh, that's how you're, there we got it. That. Does that make sense? So there we go. what if they came and said to me, oh my God, we've had an outbreak, but we can sing in masks. So how am I going to do it? Because that's a very real, I think, did you have that? Did you ever have to sing a performance with a mask on? I did not, but I don't know that I have that kind of, I, I'm sure I would figure it out or just like sing badly or something just to get through it because I, I, I could not, I, I felt like after an hour of singing a certain way, I'm, I'm such a feeler when I sing. Well, there, that's what that, I was going to say. We, that we I, I can't. I start, I start re, um, I just find another way to you do adjust, it. And then, yeah. and then I adjust and then I take it off. I'm like, Oh, shnikes, I've missed it all up. Now I have to like redo, redo it all, redo right, all the mechanics right. of it. Okay. Because and of the muscle not, memory, right? Yeah. And, but then you fatigue. So then, yeah. Mm -mm -mm. And, and been, Tosca was a new challenge. role for you. So you didn't yeah. have any muscle yeah. memory that you could rely yeah. on. Whereas Carrie is singing Mimi. And it has a lot of muscle memory and you know that that is a real thing like muscle memory as we yeah. all know it's a real thing okay, so, but yeah let me ask you this though yes muscle memory new role i can't even imagine so i i like kudos to you for making it happen with toss of all things oh my god but for i have a question for you guys how long did it take for you to trust your body to remember how to support the sound. Cause for me, that's been the most, the biggest mental. Mm. Cause I, it's like, I know to do it, but my brain is like, is it going to do it? Is it going to do it? Is it going to support that B flat? Is it going to support that B natural? And I don't know if I necessarily trust it. So in my brain, I'm constantly like Nike, do it, do it, do it, do it. <laughs> just do it. <laughs> yeah. Did that happen for you? Or am I just the weirdo? You're not a weirdo. <laughs> oh, slightly, but you know, a little bit. I, I don't know. I mean, Sandra, you're a master technician. So I, I mean, and you, your rep, you sing, you all, I mean, I don't think you can ever just like go broadly into anything you do, but for lyric stuff, we go broadly into, I mean, and we shouldn't, right. We have to get like skinnier and all that kind of stuff, know. but it was really a reminder, like go, doing elixir again. I had to remember what it feels like to go, you know, kind of to bloom in a, in like above F sharp to C's way so that it stays like, it's actually fun and easy. That's not the same way as I would even do the cantata off stage for Tosca. Right. But it's the same scale. And that C to C then I knew like, it's not far away. It's in my toolbox. Mm -hmm. um, how do I want to try it for looks? Because I have like nine more of those. Not just the one. You do. So, <laughs> so I was going to ask. That was one of our questions. Was how hard of, and you had a very quick shift from Tosca, wait, to yeah. Verdi Requiem, to Le Lisier d'Amore, and we're talking oh. three different kind of fox there. How 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 did you manage that, and how hard was it? I think, thank God, I like thank God there has been some technical understanding of when you're an E major and F major. <laughs> you know like once you figure out like where that high b goes and that high c and like all the rest mm -hmm. like it's like slowly and surely they're all related and all the soprano it seems like was in the same key it really was adina's in the same key okay it's it's really bizarre but it is um okay. so in a way but i'll tell you with the what was really hard for me 
was a set anytime a set is open in like a big hall like lyric like I, I like I'm, I'm a feeler so if I would step a certain place and then out that's it I couldn't hear anymore and it really messed with me and then finally I just like simplified things so like by the last one I was like okay just stay downstage and sing <laughs> don't just do any cutesy articulating <laughs> you know like simple 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 you know and it's but it, I, I find that that's like aware like as you're doing the just do it Carrie feel what you're doing and feel what you need to do more or less of because it's an adjustment it's like we're out of practice we've been singing right in a room we've been singing in a mask in a room yeah the theater um I had a chat with Kyle Kelson and he said that Giorgio Tozzi would him. say whatever you do the theater will correct it it does it's, it's so true so it's so amazing so I mean a good theater right like a good acoustic yes <laughs> the name of my I book is going to be just sing stupid my my uh, my biography that's the title <laughs> of it, just sing stupid <laughs> it, 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 there was that that's the edited version of it but <laughs> oh my god you know like Sandra, seriously what did it feel for you was it for you 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 talk getting about back it. to singing well it's like okay it's kind of funny I'm gonna say it like getting back to singing is one thing mm -hmm. and then like what you sing is like okay <laughs> chapeau because <laughs> it's like you oh, i'm just gonna do a new thing of aida aida right yes like, oh my new God. thing of Macbeth. Oh, I mean, aida. after months I, we don't talk about that aida we just <laughs> get, get oh more. But the Macbeth, yeah. No, I was there, was... I loved it. And Macbeth, oh my God. You saw that, that Aida. I know, I mean, I I, I, Carrie, she I got did. to see it. It was awesome to see Sandra walk with her best friend. Like it was like, Aida, well, Aida was poetic and it was like, um, uh, yeah, I, I just felt like you just knew her. You were so in, you were just so in that I thought okay. like, wow, okay. That's how Harry saw it. That's how that feels. Wow. But, that's how that yeah. sounds and it feels like that. Yeah, but wait a minute. Amazing. We have yeah, to be real for about two seconds. <laughs> yeah. That oh, the puppets? Like the shittiest production I think I've ever seen in my life. Or <laughs> for it. Well, I didn't understand all that. I, yeah. I try I ignore a lot, man. Because you know, part of it is like it's so sad. It can be so like you can lose so much of your energy and your light when you're sweating things that just don't line up artistically with your vision. And, yep. and then it's like, well, again, like bebe, <laughs> yep. right? Either you're going to be in a zoom meeting or we're going to get to do this production in right. Paris and it's fair. It, it even, but it was weird. Cause it's like, how do you, how do you sing for no audience? You count yep. on the theater and it's a lot, but a it's lot. like, what, I don't know. I don't know. That's it's hard. hard. If you I, don't I, believe I in the production. Yeah, right. It was, yeah. But, but you right. can believe in the music. You have to, you, and your music not, always carries you. And that's where I went. I just thought, you know what? Okay, there's a puppet in front of me. I don't believe in this production. No one can explain it to me because that's my OCD brain. If I understand it, I can, because it's our job as artists to take the director's concept, put it in our brain, and then share it with the audience, right? So if we as the artist don't understand it, or believe how are they out there going to understand? They don't. They and don't. They didn't. <laughs> no. So yeah, that was that was. Yeah. That okay. Was really well, 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 well. So I want to talk about future. Let's talk about future. Oh yeah, because I'm so curious. You don't have to tell me, but I if you opened up the Tosca Pandora box, that means that you're opening up other Pandora boxes. Like I have, I have, let me tell you, can I, okay. The Pandora box of Tosca was such a box because of people were warning, warning, warning. You're going to wreck your voice. You're going to wreck your voice. I don't think I have that kind of instrument. It's very funny that it's not funny, but I mean, uh, the things that fatigue me aren't that it's when I'm not singing well at all <laughs> which yeah. is only it's emotionally connected you know if it's a just you know a bad bad circumstance but I think that what was so interesting about Tosca is that 
that act two, there is a way to sing into it, but you have to, of course, the conductor has to protect you from allowing the orchestra to just like volcanically erupt, you know? And so That's if you don't have that kind of, if you don't have that kind of, um, if, if someone is not going to be aware of, if the orchestra is not aware of wanting to hear you, you being you plural Scarpia and, you know, and all of that, there's no hope for anybody. And it could be, it could be a wrecker, but I think that it bounces in an area that's, um, I used to think that the parts that were screamy were too low. And then I started thinking, well, stop pushing there. Like, don't let it be, let it be like a little more subtle or like speak it, speak mm -hmm. it above and like project it up or whatever. And then settle. And and for me, getting angry helps. But Pandora Box, I guess I, I was relieved that it didn't um, hurt me, that it also was a, a really, um, a, I felt like what I learned with Mimi and Liu, I could apply to mm -hmm. her, the way she falls in love, the way she's hopeful. And then when she's so angry, that Greek spirit of like, beyond traviata angry, you know, grandio, yeah. beyond that, she gets this other angry and it's like right in that money oh spot of a G yeah. and B flat and it's like, chow, and then a jump. That was the most, it was superwoman. It was like, that was a big gift. It was a big gift. So, and so if that's Pandora's walking it, y'all know another lady like that. Yeah, let me know who well, it is. Well, okay, I need so, to go. <laughs> so, what's, so what's after Tosca now? Has that opened the door for butterfly or sweat angelica or the three queens yeah okay i've been dying to try a norma first before all those queens because i think that fundamentally a lot has to be in place and i i really love norma mm -hmm. but i think there's there's an athleticism with verdi that i need and crave that i get with mozart and it's in a way that's like my bel canto but i really okay. wish for a norma one day um, but Elizabeth and Don Carlo will be coming, Butterfly will be coming, but I haven't scheduled a lot of them. It's just like one, let's see. And, and I mean, uh, that's, that's how I feel about that. I really wanted to do Swar Angelica before, before I, I would have thought that would have been a logical next step for me. And then, you know, if I feel like super heroic, think of Tritico, but I think I, I don't know. I, I, one what about Anna Belena? <laughs> because personally, I think Carrie and I would both agree to take on Anna Belena before Norma. Am yeah. I right, Carrie? Absolutely. Yep. Ooh. Yeah. Oscar. And especially with your voice, which has such a meaty, beautiful middle voice, because yeah. Anna Belena is low. Yep. Is low. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a thought. The, and yeah. The stamina of the whole thing, because mm -hmm. if your body, if you if you teach your body how to make it from the beginning to the end with a healthy instrument, then Norma will be a piece of cake. Am I right about that, Sandra? I haven't sung Norma, but it's well, you sang. You've seen it, and you've been a part right. of a Norma production. You've done Anna Giza, right? Right. So I, um, yeah, mm -hmm. but Anna, Anna, Anna's amazing. I Anna wish. So I amazing. wish you'd be a great yeah. Anna. You yeah. would, oh. in my opinion. In, in, in our humble opinion, you would be a great honor. And, well, and when you, you say I butterfly, so. it makes me think, because I've done several of them, know who that conductor is. And if you have- Oh, any, I do. Oh, yeah. Okay, then you're yeah. fine. And it's you're someone fine. It's someone who's walked, um, it's actually, you know, it's Patrick Summers in Houston. And he's oh, actually great. walked like Pat Reset and Ana Maria Martinez Perfect. through it. And so like Perfect. he proposed that Perfect. idea. And, and it's HGO, I love that family. But yeah, it, you know, I was more scared of Butterfly than Tosca. I mean, I'm scared. Of Tosca be. was like nowhere near. I was like, I would like, be. I personally that entrance, would be. Right? It's like, it's. And also, it's the, the, it's the emotion of it. What do you think? Carrie, you're the only one who's done both. So I, the um, um, Butterfly is way more taxing than Tosca because the emotions and the weight of the orchestra when you're in that middle and then you're mm -hmm. flying and back down again and it's the entrance is nothing compared to the rest of the show by the time mm -hmm. and it's boom 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 because you also have to switch the voice to sing the flower duet 
the, the duet flower duet is in a different place and how you sing it than the other, than the scene with Sharpless or the scene with the kid. I mean, and it's a are, different emotion, isn't it? Tosca different, is really... different emotion and different places in the voice. So you have to know, and because it goes boom, boom, boom together in the middle, if I started learning that role for the first time, I would be starting there. Where's the flower duet? Where's the sharpless scene? Where's the, that? Does that make sense? And then go back to the- Yes. So, you hear that, people? Masterclass. Boom. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's what I told Carrie when she started learning Tosca. I'm like, yeah, uh, yeah, learn the last act. Yep. And then go to two and then go to one. Because yeah. the last act is like up here, as you know. Yes. And act two here. is like down here. And act one is kind of, you know, Act mm -hmm. one is Mozart to me. I know act someone hates that, but act one is like singing Mozart. Act you have three. to, you can't, yeah. <laughs> it is, it's act three is like, with no, with nothing. <laughs> act, act three is like, oh, but thank God it comes after act one or two. Cause as we all know, as singers, you have to know what your voice does after you've sung and mine goes higher. So luckily act three is not as hard, but some people's voices drop as they sing and you get to act three and you're like, I love act three though. I love telling that whole story all over again. You know, it's so like, it's almost, you go, you get to go into this crazy place in your head and you're telling, you're reliving this whole story. And I just kind of love that. It's, I think that's why I just love all the Aldens and all the whack productions yeah. that make me so happy, but yeah, I love Okay. That. I have a question that I really, 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 we have a question that we really, 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 or a topic that we really wanted to talk about, right, Carrie? Yes. We, yeah. we went there with Renee Fleming. Oh. And yes, and this is a discussion about our persona. Like, do you feel as opera singers now, after living through a pandemic, as opposed to pre-pandemic, because we were always taught we have a public persona that we portray, My that we want the people to see with social media, and then we have mm -hmm. that private. Do you feel like that, like you, what you put out in social media, do you really, is it, is it you or is it mm. Eileen, the public persona? The right. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. Uh, okay. I, I know. Yes, and it's yes, a whole yes, yes. We can't put ourselves down. You know, I think that like, if you put in it, like if I took a screenshot of you showing your butt, like I would do it because it's like, it's so cute. I would make a boomerang of it. It was Did amazing. You? And I think it's like, our fans would be like, yeah. And then they're gonna be like, where do I get the Canadian pajama? And you'll be sponsored and there you go. Now you get a yeah. license to fly. But see that it's you one think approach. That. But you think yeah. through all that. Not I a lot of other singers it. think through that. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, I'm also, I think that I know, I know I haven't, okay. Hmm. How do I say it? I need to start off without like that self-deprecating thing, but it's just when you know you're an artist that can sing it down, like you, like who, they could turn you into a different, you know, it's the industry that says like, here's what you should do. They're not singing though. Mm -hmm. You are, and we are, and we have to decide what's congruent with our personality. And if it's off brand or on brand, and then it's hard to put a boundary maybe there's going to be a whole season where you just want to like I, I I did very few posts over the pandemic and I and then it's you know you can go everything offers you an opportunity to look at the bright side of things or to reconsider a strategy and I think it's all it all has to do with what rings true to you the artist you the human being and we never really know who all of our fans are. I think that we're very lucky in life if we have our close friends that my father always said, your closest friends are on, you know, you can count them on your hand. And so I guess one of the things that's hard not to do is to sweat all those things. You know, of course we want people to love us and, and to be excited when we're gonna debut a role and come and buy tickets, but we don't have those metric measuring. And I can tell you, even if, my metrics go up and post that does not say anything is connected to selling tickets. I would love to, I would put money into that. If, if I knew that that was going to work or that music education could be funded or that more access in different communities would be um, a guarantee. 
but we, we don't know those things. And so I just try to align what I love and know is true and important to me issues of, of course, access and, and inclusivity and diversity and, and friendships and like to try to put those forward more um, emphatically would be my way or the way I would suggest anybody. Because when you believe in it, when you know something for yourself, you're also, it's easier to talk about. It's easier to say like up to this point, we don't talk about it or, you know. Yes. It's, so it's you a have a bit, plan, you yeah. have a social media plan, like in your I, mind. No, yes and no. I no because okay. now, now that I say this, look, yes. you guys, I don't know. The swimming divas has been like, such an immense uh, amount of energy and uh, a great deal, a great gift that if we didn't have a pandemic, I don't know if you would have done this. I would hope you would, because I mean, I need a butterfly thing. Anyway, um, I, I think that like, what a joy to see what creativity can do under, under different circumstances. And uh, I think it's great when you do have that strategy and you can commit to that, to those posts and, and programming and bravi. Uh, I don't think that, you know, it's okay if you can't, <laughs> it's yeah, okay. Totally. And that you are still loved, valued, and cherished, and all of those things. But I think now that after expressing that and taking on that question, I would love to share more about, you know, for example, Carrie, I never like did a post about, you know, Tosca and just having you, you know, have a discussion with, with all of us together. So that would have been something that I could do. It requires, obviously, when you invite someone like, like I'm invited, you know, you, you've dedicated a space and time and, and the format for it. And that's the kind of quality and presence that it takes. Vulnerability, and, you know? Yeah. I, that's trust. a hard one. Yeah, and yeah. I, I would have never, I wasn't a big fan of social media before. I was always um, impressed with people that knew how to manage it and knew what, what vision or what their brand was or whatever, but I am very much, my life is on my sleeve. What do they say? Your heart's on your sleeve. Right? On your sleeve. So yeah. I had a really difficult time with being on a show, being extremely unhappy. And then I'm supposed to make happy posts. And I was like this bullshit. And so mm -hmm. I, and then we've talked with, you know, somebody like Andrew Ousey from uh, Unison Media. And he's like, get over it. It's your job. You know, like you have to find or like what you, I think you would say, you'd have to find the light, you'd have to find the sparkle or the sunshine in it somewhere. But for me, sometimes that's really hard to do. So with the pandemic and everybody singing, I thought, I fuck this, sorry. I really need to have these conversations because how are you all feeling? Because I'm feeling horrible. And mm -hmm. I, I know I can't be the only one in this boat. Mm -hmm. So we started this and then and even the Elsa video, which if you haven't seen it, there was- a, I saw it. I, yes, I, I okay. uh, yeah. There was a lot oh. of vulnerability on that. And there was a lot of discussion about, do I want to put that much of myself online? Because I normally don't. There is a line for me. And, um, but then that, I'm glad that Elsa, we all three of us were brave enough to put it out there because it rang true with so many people because- yeah. We are living in an, in an era where there are, people are thinking of suicide. People are thinking of quitting this business. People are, and this has been horrendous um, time in all of our lives. So it just gave me a hug, the responses to say, yeah, this is how I feel. So even when I- You were honest, we all were honest. And I think that that is because of the pandemic, I guess what we're trying to say is, you know, because of the pandemic, I think before, you know, we all would have put pictures of us, look at here we are, you know, here's my Tosca debut, or here's Carrie singing me, me, you know, like, happy, happy, happy. But I think the pandemic might have taught us that being vulnerable and being honest and being sometimes showing the dark side of our lives on social media is okay. It's okay. You know, and, okay. and that's why you do all of your social media i see no now i see i see where we're getting to now i see what we're yeah, getting yeah, yeah. to a little more um i was not happy in the pandemic i was not happy and so i would say yes my post reflected the happiest most positive persona okay. Okay. that was oftentimes not me in the best i if you could see me no i mean it was hard even like i said even working um 
I was very well aware of the privilege it was to work, but it wasn't like, I was not, it was not um, easy breezy, happy, and it was stressful. And like, it was weird. It was so weird. And I didn't know how to express it. And of course I love curated posts and this and that. And yes, I have a a social media team, Lenny Studio. Um, But even we had a poll, I, I wanted to try to see how I could go through that year with without losing these um, relationships that I've built in my career mm-hmm. to have because I love these people and also their work is valuable and their time is valuable and I, I really had to wrestle like how much can we drop anything because I just can't afford it and I just I, I don't even know what I'm singing about I can't even I don't, you know it, it was very dark so right that is not what I put forth on my on my feed um had I for me I I guess the reason why and it depends on the effect of of how you feel but the lower the lower I speak I then start dropping even lower so my mood is like very I'm very um I'm very sensitive <laughs> well, that, so, would make you, that makes us all great you know, artists too yeah. Yeah, but but if if I start speaking, I'll drop further, you know. So I it's not that it's not happening and I'm not in denial that it was tough or in denial that it sucked and it really we did lose live. We've lost artists into different they went to different industries. I, I have many friends who just don't sing anymore. Um and for other, you know, even other reasons beyond the pandemic, there's a limitation to what this industry thinks is important, I know. Um, that we lose out on some magnificent people, right. magnificent, uh, provocative um, voices with perspectives that could offer us, you know, new interpretations right. of something. Right. Um, so I, I've, I think that that is why I try, because I know that that's a fact, I try to yeah, try not to to highlight the challenge because okay. the challenge is always going to be there. I just try to evoke and promote the possible. And if I got to do something, okay, hey, hopefully it's some good energy. Let's keep going. But yeah. it's it, yeah, it's it's not um, genuine, I would say, uh, because it's media. And I think that even when we're in a performance. Um, my very best moment is me, you know, it's very hard to be an artist that's not going to be personal. You know, there are many people who talk about, well, you you need to, you know, like the great Janet Baker, Dame Janet Baker always spoke about, you know, how you keep the glass clean and you get, I can't do that. (laughs) I'd love to, I would love to. I still cry in the middle of some of the scenes because it's just, it's the music, it's the Right. I just feel it in that way. And that's okay. And it's not to say one art artist or art way of expression is higher or lower. Why can't yeah. it just, just let it be? And I love and, and beautifully said, thank you. Yeah. No, I love you this know, discussion because we've talked to so many singers over the pandemic and how they approach their social media. And everybody has this very different way of what works for them. Some some like you, the positive and the light and the happiness was was what the feed looked like. Others, there was no feed because they couldn't even bring themselves to post. It was like complete yeah. opposite. Does that make sense? So it's really, to me, Absolutely. it's fascinating to find how our all of our amazingly gifted uh, artistic brains needed to process, you know, this thing. Um, I, I think, you know, Carrie, I think it's it sounds also like, Part of it is that <laughs> these polar opposites in a way of like how we're, I mean, we're not far from each other in terms of like when we started and everything. So I feel like the background I have was very, t- like uh, you had to be very put together all the time. You can't even show if you're upset. If you think something's unfair, you can't even, you know, you meet sponsors, you just blah, 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 blah. Everything's fine. Oh, yeah. Hunky dory. And So the reality is like these other, so yeah, I think it's, it's, it's that dualism that 
it's hard. It's, br- it's and brutal. It is and, brutal. And you, you it actually, is. you it maneuver through, in my opinion, it's brutal. And you maneuver through that social media world so beautifully. It was like Joyce DiDonato did. did this amazing thing with social media and you were the oh, next generation yeah. behind her to do that. And, and I, I, could not do it. Does that make sense? Like, but, yeah, but I even thought, I mean, even I've, I've also expressed to Joy, like, I think she was really willing that it takes us, it's a certain personality. You know, some people are really like, even Renee, I would say Renee Fleming is highly, they, they have energy that they just have, you know, Joe Calais has kind of like that. There's just a, an amount, an immense amount of this energy that they can have those types of exchanges and it's not, it's costing them, of course, their, their presence, but that kind of presence for many different personalities, like you or like me, it costs us energy in a way, right? Cause you have to like hike it up to like, like beyond. And, mm-hmm. and that's, that's okay to not, you know, that's a different, it doesn't mean anything bad. It's just a no. different personality trait and cool. Like, so know that. And then like but be- Joyce has stepped just, away. Joyce has stepped away from social yeah. media. Yeah, here she's and there, she's a, like, wow. <laughs> yeah, she's right. taken a yeah. huge step back. And, you know, we've yeah. had, I've had discussions with her about it. And, you know, I know that the pandemic affected her as well, too. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, yeah, yeah. But let's also talk about that. Because when I was younger, I remember showing up for a rehearsal when I was in the Young Artist Program at the Met in <sighs> Lululemon sweatpants, I know, and tights. And I was told, no you really gonna wear that Sandra like how important are are, you know I'm crawling around on floor as a fifth hand servant in Electra you know and I was told well you really shouldn't wear that to rehearsal and I think things have changed now but how important do you really think now how important do you think looks are in this business and and following conforming to that I think as we have eyes to see and ears to hear, and sometimes people hear what they see. They don't even hear what we hear. (laughs) So beautifully said, right? It's like, it goes without, unfortunately or fortunately, it goes without saying, if you're a per, like I struggle with, uh, oh no, I'm not going to cry. Oh, uh, we all struggle show. with it. Oh. Say it, because I know what you. I know what you're going to say, and we're all, we we all through. I think struggle oh. with the same thing. Ah. Come on, <laughs> it's okay. To, it's okay. We can. Great, we're going. <laughs> if I look less than polished, and I mean, like, it takes a lot of effort because I'm not. I gravitate toward gowns. I can do gowns. I can't do. What am I going to wear to work? <gasps> Okay. That's tricky for me. So I've been in some trainers and like, not trainers, like sweatpants or this or that. And like, I've had to, I have been spoken to, like, I'm no one. I, or like, I don't matter if, unless I carry myself visually in a more polished way and get all of those things on the list of things, then I get spoken to a different way or treated a different way. And I mean, as obvious as something simple about, you know, going to the stage door when I'm in London, if I'm not dressed well, they're going to be like, who the heck are you? And then they're like, oh, it's an artist. Okay. She has her card. Then I get in. But like you do, you know, like if it's your armor, I I get spoken to not just me, I think anyone in this industry as, um, uh, yes, you get treated differently based on how you look and how you present yourself. And that is something that's just a fact of life. And how you treat people is also an indicative, you know, important point of your own character. So I personally try to, I think I treat most people with dignity and respect. But I also have to remember as much as I try not to look at the outside and all of that and value that person, person, and for all the, you know, virtues that they have and they offer, um, I try to remember that I have to carry myself with that dignity and that amount of love. And then I show up a little bit better, um, even though I feel like 
you know, some, you know, I don't feel well, or I don't feel up to it, or I feel like scared. Um, it's, it's armor. Like you just said, Sandra. It is so, armor. Yeah. It, it's a reality. And it's women. I think we have to think about that armor even more than men. Well, yes. well your armor ladies has been also, you know, not only this is just this, this beautiful way you're, you can articulate all of these these layers of things that everyone is going through or get to those like that's huge <laughs> that's it's, so it's it's such a gift and i and you know to have I really younger that. generations to hear it that eileen perez is going through the same thing that they're going through maybe that'll help them too you know you know not until sandra and i became friends however many years ago did I understand that? Because I always thought, okay, once I make it, once I make it to her level, everything's just going to be awesome. I'm going to be treated nicely all the time. Nobody's going to give me shit about blah, 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 blah. And in not talking with her, there is no arrival of the shitty part of what we deal with going away. And that was a huge lesson to learn. And even in the pandemic with all this stuff and the amount of crap that she had to just swim through and wade through and sounds like you did too with all the different changes and everything it's it to people that don't know it looks glamorous and it looks oh my god i can't wait to be them but yes there is a goal for that but you also have to be aware of this other pendulum side that is not glamorous and glorious and what you think it's going to be so is that my right i'm so glad you said that i'm so glad you said that and i think that it was also my illusion of that. I, I was, I, I had an illusion like that was going to go away and having you both speak about your experiences lets me know, uh, and everyone, how much work and how much courage it still takes to continue and to, you know, Sandra, you were saying that you were preparing Pirata online, <laughs> the whole role. Girl. Can I just say doing coloratura on zoom? don't work. <laughs> it's like, wait, but, Tony, I, come on. You know, Tony. But so one of the, one of the things that has brought light in the pandemic was the Vincero Academy and like Dandelion Institute that friends mm -hmm. of mine created to work with young artists and pay things forward. Love it. But also that seeing these young artists invest and reinvest in themselves to study the role and take it apart. Mm -hmm. I thought again, that's the kind of work it actually really takes. Like there's no shortcut. Even if you can learn, I don't know, Musetta by rote one time and go all over the world and make all your Musetta money, good for you. But it's like, at some point you have to learn another role and you have to offer a little bit more of your voice, this and that. And it's, it's nonstop, it's a lot, it's a lot of work. And everyone who is at every level is doing almost a similar you know, amount of work and, and, and trying to keep growing. So I thought, um, I think that this is just, just great to say because no one's coasting. No, no one's, one's coasting. coasting. But I have to say that the younger generations of the ones that we talked with over the pandemic, they were the ones that gave me life because yeah. they were the ones that were still so hungry for this art form, so hungry to be on stage where a lot of us were just like, oh my God, like, do I really want to go back to this? <laughs> Yeah, well, I mean, is 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 a bit younger than than both of us, so you know, we'll just we'll put that out there. Oh, too. okay, sorry, but um, no, do a glowy face. <laughs> it's a lot of glow makeup. It's beautiful. <laughs> it's I love it. Quickly, I did want to ask you: when you're told to do something that just doesn't feel right, no matter how many times you try it, do you just end up doing what you like? Yeah. It's hard, right? Like when someone tells you how to do a movement at a particular time in a particular way and you execute those things but it doesn't feel right it doesn't go and feel like i couldn't sing on my knees <laughs> I, well then you know i, I have i knees. have a rule i give people the benefit of the doubt i've always said carrie and i we've talked about this i have the three time rule i'll try it once twice third time if it doesn't work i, I and i tell them this like david mcvicker knows okay david i'll try three times because david oftentimes wants me to do things completely <laughs> god bless him and mm -hmm. so i say okay i'll try it three times but if the third time and i really try it if the third time yeah. it doesn't work we have to come to a compromise yep that's and so beautiful 
because you set it up. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I'm going to use that. That's awesome. absolutely. And I also have, I, awesome. I have something to, Carrie knows about this. I have my diva card and it's always in my back pocket or in, in my, my happy camper pocket. <laughs> <laughs> and I use it one time during a production. And that's like the, the hell no card. Like, uh, no, no, no. Well, okay. But can we also add the hell no card? And then the tears card, because tears work too. <laughs> well, Carrie, don't give away oh. that and an explosive diarrhea. An explosive <laughs> diarrhea. <laughs> Carrie has missed rehearsals because of explosive diarrhea. You know, and now, and now we put it out there. Sometimes you just need to take care of yourself. And sometimes you know, self-care. <laughs> you know, I there when the frustration level for me gets so high. Either I'm going to start yelling or I'm going to start crying. And most of the time I'd rather cry because I really don't want what I'm thinking to come flying out of my face. Um, but and Carrie has no filter. No, it's very difficult for me. I'm not, Sandra's like for perfect you, but at how she, yes. but I have no filter. So um, it's, it's very, very difficult. And I have apologized a lot in this business. But Shall we do rapid fire? Yes. It, I'm oh. sorry. Eileen, is there anything else that you wanted to talk about? Did I tell you I love you? I Aww, tell you I love you. Thank you. And thank you so much. And oh, it just means so much to me. Thank you. And and I'm sorry, can we just see that left hand just for a minute? Oh yeah. Oh hi. <laughs> wait, 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 no, wait, just slow it down. Slow it down. Oh. Oh wow. yes. Wait, I think okay. you you need to go to the wide zoom there because it's so big. <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Did Thank you pick that you. out or did he pick it out? Thank you. He picked it out. Yeah. He's 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 very poetic. <laughs> he's a keeper. He's oh, a keeper. He's beautiful I inside know. and out. What a good one. I Glad know. you got a good egg. Solomon Howard. We're just gonna say that that, yes. that he is officially engaged to Solomon Howard. <laughs> Rapid fire. Can I start? Can I start? Can I start? Yes. Ooh, 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 ooh. Yeah, but see, we even have to have the rapid fire dance, you know? Rapid, 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 rapid. Okay, there you go. So, oh my God, hilarious. We can edit it all. Oh, we'll do nah. TikTok Sorry. next time. So, if you had a fragrance, what would it be called? <gasps> of course, like an ice cream. Dulce de leche. <laughs> no, I would do. I don't know. I don't know. That is. I would call yours. No. I would call I your it, fragrance like, sunshine. Oh, okay. Yeah, that one. That's it. See, <laughs> that's what I would call it. Sunshine. Because yeah, you're always bright and cheery. <laughs> that's a good thing. Okay. What is the worst habit that you will never break? <gasps> oh, oh no. Oh, habit. Probably having coffee. I love my coffee. I don't think I'll break it. No, I like it. I like it too. I'm enjoying it. I love yeah. it. it makes Especially with so a, good with a little Christmas in it, which my girlfriend oh, it, look at that. It's Bailey's. Look at Thank that. you, Yvonne, for yes. that. So yes. Bailey's coffee. She calls. Would you like your coffee with a little <laughs> Christmas in it? <laughs> what single person changed your life the most? Mm. Oh my God, Solomon Howard. Yeah. I yeah. Love yeah. Yeah. I feel so much more like a lifer now. I feel I even call him Mediva because he um he offers so much more life beyond opera mm -hmm. and with his perspective and and all of all of who he is. He's he's pure love and, and just so artistic and but but loved life, loves loved living really well and, and we just go everywhere we go it's like a different place because I'm with him so it everything seems totally different and, I and love that. more more possibilities ahead yeah that I didn't oh. think about before <laughs> so, Yay. that's yeah. the best that sounds so mm. awesome and so healthy because life is so much bigger than our careers you know so much bigger yes. and yes. such a beautiful thing to experience outside of of our our jobs so yeah because you yeah, know I, about it. I mean Marilyn Horn always said it's a piece of grizzle that could go at any moment so two pieces, Ooh. Two pieces of Ooh. Grizzle. so what do you want your life to look like if that goes I want my life to look like this I've always asked oh. myself that question so yeah I'm glad you found somebody that makes you look outside of all of that 
Carrie, oh, you, next Carrie. question. Um, yeah. la la la. What the world needs now is what? Love, sweet love. Yeah, there yeah, you right? go. <laughs> yeah, I wear my hearts right. everywhere. Yeah. Mm -hmm. right. What was the last thing you Googled? <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, it or was sell. something really specific. No. Oh, gosh. And I can't check my phone. I'm on it. Um, Wedding dresses. It was, oh, oh, I'm on the oh. I'm on, I'm on that. Uh, the last thing was like how to get to, yeah, no, I'm always trying to figure out my way to get to a certain place, like how to get to a cosmetic store and I, I still couldn't find it. And I'm always with the blue dot and holding thing and I, I, I walk the wrong way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that's okay. not my gift. <laughs> and you know, oh, I'm so glad that I'm not the only one because I'm, I could have walked around the same shop. Like I could have walked around the same block and have been like, how did I miss that? How did I, you stupid, oh. God, it's all your fault. <laughs> Carrie, I did. I walked around the last time I was in Florence. I walked a whole way around this, um, what is it called? Do, not, not Don Giovanni, Santo Giovanni. Or, it's the big cathedral here. Uh -huh. Oh, I walked Duomo. all the way around the plaza to get to the side street that I could have cut like from the beginning. I, and then I was like, you know what? Let's just do it again. <laughs> I, I just got get used your to steps it. in. Get your oh, but I see that. I yeah. know. Yeah, steps. <laughs> okay. What is? Oh, what is your guilty pleasure? Mm. Oh, Netflix. Like, like, like binge watching New Girl, for example. <laughs> But I'm not guilty. Like, that feels so good. Yeah. Oh, I'm that, not, I'm not guilty. guilty. Yeah. Guilty. Not nah, really. No, that's too nice, I guess. Guilty pleasure. <laughs> that's not the wrong. I don't know. Talk that's good. <laughs> uh, what is your secret talent? Oh, mm -hmm. no, I don't have one. I think my, I think my superpower is encouraging people. Oh, I, I, I think that is my superpower or secret talent. Like, I really genuinely see the best in people I really do and so when I and I I really maybe because I feel the pain of what they're going through or something that I'm just like oh like try this way you know like so I sometimes it's hard for me to be a complete total like no feedback listener mm. because I kind of want to be like try this you know like to bring them in that empathy. way in a good way empathy yeah okay. yeah yeah. Okay. Most important question ever. What is your favorite cuss word in any language? Chingado. Chingado. What yes. does that mean? Fuck, fuck you. <laughs> no, no, no. Not fuck you. Just like fuck. Fuck, oh. fuck, fuck, fuck. Oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh, fuck, fuck, fuck. That's a new one. In Love Spanish. Yeah. Okay. Shall we do? Can I do the last one? Yes. If heaven exists, you probably, if, having watched this, you probably heard this. If heaven exists, what do you want to hear God say when you walk through the pearly gates? Welcome home. Here's your big shoe closet. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> full of shoes. Yes, full of shoes. We have to make sure, right? That fly, yeah. <laughs> Super yeah. sparkly everything. Or maybe sparkly it'll be like everything. all sparkles. I'm like, ah, oh, I'm home. <laughs> Welcome to heaven. Everything is sparkly. Oh my God, I love that so much. Oh my God, I love well, Thank it. you for joining us today. Oh, love you. And ladies. we hope you get over your jet lag. <laughs> yes. Oh, I love you. Thank and you so much. I hope to see you, hear you again soon. Yeah. Thank you for being angels. In oh, come on. Them. Good Love luck you. there. Good luck in Firenze and enjoy all the yummy food. Oh, so, I know. I'm, so jealous. I'm, I'm learning okay. how to make all the pastas. So I saw yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, I saw yeah, that. Yeah. So enjoy. Love you. And okay, we'll do. Bye. Bye. very pretty. Hi. Wait, Carrie. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> it looks like it, it needs um, a little, little extra support. There you go. You can there bend you. it the way you want. That's cute. Right? I like it. I like it.
Uh, this no, is coffee really with a bit of Christmas. I love it. You look like you're a Christmassy. I'm, it makes me excited for the holidays. Do, do, do. Well, it's a moose. Like, seriously, this is my, mm-hmm. oh, Canada, don't you know? My, my, my moose and my, my canoes, eh? Canoes, and eh? I'm a bear. This is a Canadian company. It's the um, little black house, little black house. Yeah. I'm leaving. Bye. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs>